Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture, and we got another solo album review, this time of the newest project from Orville Peck, Bronco. I remember when Orville Peck first came out and so many folks started asking for me to cover his stuff. Now this was in the middle of 2019 where I wasn't really taking requests at the time and there was a lot of other stuff going on that was pulling me away, but hey, I'm always on the lookout for new country music, especially that of a very queer Canadian by way of South Africa stripe. And I had heard him on Bandcamp comfortably before the mainstream had caught on. So I did actually get around to listening to his critically acclaimed debut album, Pony and I did not really care for it. Now, don't get me wrong, I really did want to like this project. Orville Peck's sonorous vocals seemed to split the difference between Elvis Presley and late 80s Nick Cave. He was a pretty good songwriter to boot. The tune certainly seemed to be there, but it just was not clicking for me, and that really bothered me. Eventually, I settled on the production as the primary culprit, just feeling kind of underpowered to match the presence of our lead here, which I would eventually highlight as a fact as to why his 2020 EP Show Pony also didn't really click when I reviewed that. Going back to him now, yeah, still don't quite work. All the ingredients might be there, but it's not a project that feels like it's got the scope to match the scenes and the presence with which Orville Peck delivers in his voice or his writing, instead relying on a lot of reverb to create the smoky mystique that can't quite obscure how Orville Peck's vocals are quieter than they should be, and how the grooves don't nearly have the punch. Now, Orville Peck reportedly self-produced that album, and while I respect a pretty impressive first-time effort for, again, a pretty decent album. It's not bad. Pony just wound up feeling smaller than it should. And while I get how that could create a certain lonelier, outcast vibe that could coalesce on a couple of songs, it was a debut that really highlighted more potential than anything else going forward for me. And I was not the only one who noticed that. Pony netted a lot of major label attention, so alongside his deal with Sub Pop, Orville Peck also landed a link with Columbia, which brought him in contact with producer J. Jay Joyce. Now, I've had a very messy history with Jay Joyce. See any of my Eric Church reviews for some of that. But Joyce has also been a little more consistent the past couple of years. And if there was someone to give some serious muscle and swell to what Orville Peck was making... I mean, Joyce is at least capable. Now, I wasn't really fond of how Orville Peck was staggering this new album's release across a bunch of EPs. The drip feed approach rarely works as well as labels like to think it does. But all right, we got the full album now. What did I think of it? Honestly, I'm more than a little bit annoyed that Orville Peck chose to use the staggered EP release strategy for this because it's fantastic. Not only is this some of the best country I have heard in 2022, it's a sort of burly, varied, and damn near cinematic music that could have handled a full-size release on its own, where the Bronco can just cut loose and run wild and take you along for the ride. I mean, come on, put it out all as one. It makes sense. I mean, it's such a triumph across the board in such a straightforward way. Might actually wind up making for a shorter review than I expected, but that might also be doing a disservice to the sheer breadth of text and emotional catharsis that this provides. Either way, my god I needed this. I'm so happy it wound up like it did. And you know, the easy way to summarize this is that if you liked Pony, this is that on steroids, where it all feels bigger, sweeping across the open windswept prairies, and where you can finally get the most out of Orville Peck as a theatrical performer. But simply going bigger, it's also not as easy as that might seem, especially given J. Joyce's tendencies to strip out the groove for a clunkier brand of epic. Not so here. I would bet very early on in the process that Joyce realized that Orville Peck's approach to classic 60s and 70s country, paired with the smattering of AM rock, needed very little augmentation. Just a little bit more of a robust sense of dynamics and scope. So in opening up the mix, not only do we get those bass grooves that I was hunting for on Pony, but also allows Peck to come into his own as a singer with a full stage to work with. Again, J. Joyce need to get out of the way. But strangely, this is where you also encounter a bit of controversy. As some have raised allegations that this highlighted exposure has really brought Orville 
Peck's limitations as a singer into focus, specifically with the Elvis Presley comparison with some of the touches of trembling vibrato. But I don't know, I don't really call it a negative here. While both men were theatrical in their time, the choices of tones and enunciation feel kind of different, especially in the context of the album, we'll come back to that. There's a lot less gimmicky Elvis impersonation or karaoke than some have implied, and Orville Peck's classically trained moments can add his own flourish, be it in gruffer timbres that don't quite open up for a full howl, a warmth that characterizes the more intimate ballads that don't quite go for the more stately presence like Elvis had, or in just how Orville Peck opens up his higher register to astoundingly good effect. His cadence also feels a lot more grounded in late 60s, early 70s country politan tones, less so the earliest country and rockabilly that Elvis used, a little less goth this time around as well, but he, that works to his benefit. But on the other side, to so thoroughly command the stage is that he still doesn't really have much in the way of chemistry on his duets, so the closing ballad, all I can say, with his bandmate Bria Salmena just does not work as strongly. She doesn't have the presence or power to match him, and to be fair, very few could. But that is the thing, when you blow up the stage to sound as huge as so much of this album does. It's a rare performer that can make the use of the most of it. And I'll give Jay Joyce a lot of credit for keeping the acoustics, the electric guitars, the pedal steel, the strings, and the banjo sounding as warm and organic as he does. Not washing out this mix while keeping the grooves very supple and propulsive. And now some Sometimes, Orville Peck will use that to ramp up the tempo, like the surf rock tinged opener Daytona Sand with the twinkling elements splashing off the galloping snares, the swaggering stomp of the title track, or the old school patter of any turn. But then you're gonna get the ballads that make for a more spare arrangement, that incredibly sweet guitar lick within Trample Out the Days, how the smoky harmonica plays into the gentle smolder of Kalahari Down, where the swells of strings just sound incredible to the even more spare pieces like the stunning piano ballad Let Me Drown or the acoustic ballad City of Gold. Hell, even some of the mid-paced songs work effectively. The AM rock inflected at a time with those vocal harmonies on the hook, the liquid bass off the patter of the texture percussion on The Curse of the Black and Die, the acoustic and banjo interplay on Hexy Mountains, even the melodies on Blush where Orville Peck has highlighted a bit of a Beatles influence and you can kind of hear it in the lead melody that still has that smoky, early 70s vibe. If I do have any small critiques, some of the grooves and transitions could feel a little bit choppy. Lafayette in particular felt kind of jerky with its Western-inspired sound. The lean single, Come On Baby Cry, it switches up dramatically for the hook, and it did take a little bit of time to grow on me given how soulful it is. But the surprise probably came with Iris Rose, where the infusion of some horns on the rollick of the snares and the banjo honestly fell a little flat. Kind of odd because everywhere else Orville Peck can wrangle the theatricality to his advantage, but maybe it's how the horns don't quite match the more understated warmth of the verses and some of the content. The one case that J. Joyce got a little bit clunky with the arrangement, that's a far better batting average than he usually has with these sorts of albums, and again, I kind of get what he was going for here. But I also appreciate how this album, despite being firmly rooted in a lot of old-fashioned melodies and tones, it doesn't feel indebted to the past. There's no record scrackle or play to a more cartoonish theatricality or machismo. One reason I don't always like the Elvis comparison always holds up, and that's a good thing. It makes it feel more modern. And that's only reinforced by the lyrics and the content. Where a pony was kind of shy and nudging around the shadows, and show pony was more tentative, Bronco swings for the fences consistently. And Orville Peck's credit does not shy away from topics that would normally be out the scope for the old-fashioned cowboys of old. It's worth mentioning that this album does not skirt around any of the gay content. It's presented as matter-of-factly as any relationship on this album, which is absolutely the right choice. But what I appreciate is how Orville Peck uses those bigger scenes to showcase a masculine emotionality, but on a bigger scale. I love the frustrated give-and-take of The Curse of the Black and Die, exploring abusive relationships, which kind of gets the moral ambiguity of the scene, and where he thinks art will help him wrangle these difficult feelings, 
only to realize it might have made them inescapable or potentially even worse, or how Come On Baby Cry is urging guys to let down their emotional guards, or how the love letter to London that is blush might as well have as much exasperation that he's still struggling to understand men as much as anybody. He doesn't know that much about love, but he gives it a try every now and then. And that wry sense of humor does a lot consistently to keep the mood light. Over the tour songs of At A Time and Any Turn, where you can tell there's a little bit of social awkwardness that does feel well realized, but also the sense of a certain distance that he's working to contextualize, longings that might go unfulfilled on Daytona Sand, or exes that feel just as much from a different time like on Lafayette or Trample Out the Days. And that sense of being acutely aware of time's passage adds a lot of pathos to some of the more longing moments, especially as Orville Peck gets older, from the windswept Hexy Mountains to the multiple songs written from a distance towards his old home in South Africa with Kalahari Dawn or City of Gold. City of Gold especially is an excellent ballad. But the one song I think that stands out as one of the most potent and powerful moments here is Let Me Drown, where he confronts his own depression and his angst and he doesn't just pour it all out, but then he throws in the old cowboy line, this town just ain't big enough for the both of us. Now is it a little ridiculous to lean on such old fashioned iconography that in order to confront more complicated angst? I mean sure, but there's an emotional truth to it that makes me realize I don't really care. It's repurposing cultural myth-making to cast a new modern cowboy, and the catharsis of it feels both old and new and relevant. I mean, after all, your legends should evolve with you. And Orville Peck here proves that they absolutely can. And let's be blunt, Bronco kicks a ton of ass. The melodies are rich and impeccably balanced. The album is as anthemic as it can be intimate, covering a breadth that few albums will have the ambition to approach, especially coming out of Nashville country. And Orville Peck proves that it can be that figure to ride the stallion across the stage. It's tempered without feeling old, cinematic without feeling overblown, and a heartfelt without spilling into melodrama, and a damn excellent country album to boot. One of the best of 2022, extremely high recommendation. This might have flown under the radar, as countries want to do, but it shouldn't for you. Check this out. So yeah, uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I would be extremely grateful. Again, this is going to fly under the radar because this whole drip feeding of EPs rarely means that the album gets the proper attention as a whole that it should. Let's change that. Please go check this out. It's great stuff. Beyond that, though, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys have a bunch of thoughts, comments down there below. Have fun. But beyond that, if you guys want to get albums on my schedule or potentially just support the channel or argue with me more directly, link to my Patreon right over there. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.